Hi everyone, my name is Tyler Collier. Let's talk about how to simplify your forms with Redux form, or really how to simplify form development. Because when you simplify your forms, that's for the end user, and let's be honest, who cares about them? I want my development experience to be better. That's what really matters, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let me give you a scenario. There you are, you're at a party, you're talking with Chuck Norris, and Dan Abramov is very politely waiting his turn to speak with you. And your coworker comes running over and kind of bumps in you, stumbles you, and he's like, hey man, listen, I gotta do some form validation, but sounds pretty easy, I'll just do it myself. And you and Chuck Norris make some eye contact, and you realize this person, this person does not know any better. Why is that? What do they not know? Well, surprise, programming forms, it's not straightforward. You want it to be, but it's not. And second, it sucks. It's boring. It's, when I do forms, it doesn't feel like real programming. Let's talk about the demo form that we're gonna be creating for today. So this form has two fields, first name and last name. Both of them are required and if the user did not fill it out, we need to give them a little message here. And importantly, if they didn't, if they touched the field, they entered it and then left, even if they didn't do any typing, we still need to tell them this is required. And that concept, it's touched. You'll notice this form is so simple, there's not even a submit button. That's just how simple I needed to make this to get through it for today, okay? So, when I think of how you would go about doing this without Redux form, this is what I picture. There's two things going on here. Number one, there's a lot of typing. And when you're doing form validation, there's just a lot to do. And number two, look at his face. He's got this face that says, I, now I realize that it's harder than I thought. Now I'm realizing all the special edge cases and all the stuff that goes into making a form. So let's get into it. I hope this is big enough to see. There's, I'm gonna walk you through it. Here I am, we've got our component and I'm using state. So this talk is about Redux form, but for this comparison, Without Redux form, I'm using the built-in React state. I am using Immutable, but you don't need to worry about that for right now. The only thing you need to pay attention to are these form values, and we've got our inputs, right? First name and last name. In addition to the value, we're also keeping track of, did the user touch the field? Um, down here is where I'm setting these validators. I'm sorry it's at the bottom for the people in the back, but the good news is, you don't even need to read it because I'm not actually showing any code to do the validation because I promise you it's so simple. It's basically, if the field is empty, write an error message, an error string. That's all that's going on, okay? Let's talk about this render method. We're grabbing these variables first and last name from our state and then all this mumbo jumbo right here, just picture that form that we were talking about earlier. We've got our inputs we're setting the value, and importantly, we've got our on change and on blur handlers. So the on change is what's gonna be used for typing, and the on blur is what we use if somebody goes into the field and leaves. That's how we get that touched event, right? And both of those are calling up to my on change where we set the value and we set that it's touched, and then we've We've set our state, we've got a call back to this validate form, and again, all this you don't really need to know, we're just setting the, remember back on the previous slide, we're setting the errors if the field was empty. That's all we're doing. But it gets worse. So that was the simplest form you can think of, but there are typically more concerns for each of your fields. So I mentioned touched, but we've also got some other potential things that you could be concerned about depending on how complex your form is. Active. What if you wanted to show a tool tip just on the active form, the active, excuse me, the active input as the person goes down the form? 
pristine is how you can tell. It's a term, by the way, these are uh, just kind of industry terms. Uh, you don't get them for free with React or anything like that, but these are the terms that are out there. Pristine, has the input been modified from its default? Not from blank. What if you are editing a form? There's going to be a default value already in there. That's what pristine is, okay? And then visited is similar to touched. It's whenever the user enters that field, touched is when they leave it. And then you can see my example here for normalizing form values. So lower casing an email address. You don't want somebody giving all caps and shouting their email address. What about phone numbers where you only want to allow numbers, maybe dashes and parentheses, but you get to control that. So those are some more concerns. These are field concerns. Additionally, we have form concerns. So almost any form that you're going to build, you need to send that to the server and you need some kind of asynchronous validation, right? And to do that, or when you do that, you want to show something to the user so that they know they need to wait. They're not clicking the thing a thousand times. Go, 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 go. You want to show them a little spinner or something. Here's a, a few examples of complex forms. I'm going to talk about that in just a second, so we're going to skip over it. And then if you're initializing from some form, basically meaning you're editing a record from your application, well, you're going to need to initialize your form. OK, so these concerns right here, when you have complex forms, is what I'm calling them. Let's uh, go take a look at this. So. I'm going to go out to the Redux form website. All right. I'm showing you this form on the Redux form website, but what I'm showing has nothing to do with Redux form in particular for this moment, right? I'm just showing you a realistic example of a complex form. In addition to the name, we've got the shipping, the billing section, and then you can add children. So on shipping, you can add a phone number. Billing, you can separately add any number of phone numbers. For this child thing, you can add a child. And uh, does anybody know Bobby Tables from XKCD, little Bobby Tables? You need to sanitize your input, people. And you can add any number of children. And for each child, you can add an award, right? So this is a complex yet decently realistic form. And wouldn't that be a nightmare to program? So you've probably heard that using Redux is a good idea. Well, everybody in here is using some form of that. But as soon as you start to use Redux, instead of what I did with just the state, now you've got more code, right? You've got your reducers. You've got your action creators. Uh, so why would you bother? Why would you even use Redux in this case? Well, let's just talk about the benefits. And since you all use Redux, hopefully you know these right offhand, right? If I just said, who knows them, everybody's hand would go up. Whenever you externalize your state, now you have a stateless component. And you hear that word thrown around, but it means that it's easier to reason about. Your component, it's more obvious what it does, and it's easier to test for that same reason. With Redux in particular, you get the dev tools, which are awesome, and time travel debugging, if you're into time travel. So what are the drawbacks? If you got those, OK, great. Well, we already talked about more code. And if you split your code out into different files, it can feel like it's just all over the place. And I'm really just trying to create this simple form. I only need to do this simple UI. What, like, who cares? Why bother? Well, what if you got all of that for free? What if you got all the benefits, but none of the drawbacks? You would have oh, Redux form. That's, that's weird. OK. So with Redux form, what is it, first of all? Well, it's a package. It's a library that you can add to your project to make it easier to handle forms and forms validation. And I love to combine it with Bootstrap. They play really well together. I cannot think of Bootstrap anymore without thinking of Brad Westfall and how much he hates it. I just, that's always happening. But it's great. It's really simple to use. So why, Dux, why Redux form in particular? There's a lot of other libraries out there. This one is awesome. It's really well thought through. The guy designed it well. He executed it well. And what I love, one of the reasons I think Redux itself is super popular is because of the documentation. It's similar here. It's got great documentation. 
and it's popular. That doesn't mean anything by itself. That doesn't prove anything. But it's great to have a de facto standard out there that we can represent, or we can all look to to go, well, that's the standard. So how do these other ones compare? It's just great when you have something to say, well, do you know this? Well, then you probably know that, or how it compares. And his name is Eric Rasmussen. He's super bright, and he's in Spain. He'll probably never come speak here at this meetup, but we can hope, right? And I hope to see him at conferences, maybe the React Rally one. We'll see what's going on. So now I'm going to show you what it looks like with Redux form. We've got our render method, which is very similar. We're pulling the first and last name out of props instead of state. So where do those props come from? I'll show you in one second. In our inputs, we're only passing the value itself. And it's because it's an object, it includes the value, but it also includes all those other things that I talked about. It, it includes touched, on change, on blur, pristine, validated, visited, all those different things you get them for free with Redux form. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this before this next line down, which is the same on the, that previous slide. This is where we're setting the error only if the field has been touched, right? We don't want to show the error if they haven't even visited that field. So we're getting the, those variables from the props, and this is how we wire it up to Redux form. You're, you should be familiar with prop types. So we've got Redux form, which is a decorator, if you're familiar with that term, or a higher order component. Is that right, HOC? Okay. Form is where we set our state. Where is the state going to live in the Redux store? You can name it anything you want. You set your fields. We've just got the two for the moment, but I can show you in a second how to make it more complex if you need to. And then these validations down here at the bottom, they're exactly the same as before. They're so simple, I'm not going to go into them. Shibuya, that was it. So the number of lines isn't proof that it's better. But what I just showed you was 26, it was 36 lines instead of 63. Generally, that means it's easier to understand. All right, and I just wanted to show this off. I think this is really cool. You remember the form that I showed you before with the complex parts? Uh, I hope you can read it. It's a little bit hard to see, but we've got dot notation. So name, name, yes, that's normal. Shipping dot street. OK, I can understand that. Dot city, dot phones. And there's brackets here, meaning any number of phones. And that's why this works, OK? Uh, billing is the same. Children, we've got brackets on children. So it accepts any number of children. And those children have name and age. And each of the children can have any number of awards because we've got the brackets here. So awesome. Now, interestingly, Redux form doesn't include any validator libraries. And when I first found that out, I was like, what? But it turns out that typically the validations that you need are so simple. I did it with just a few lines. And of course, you have the opportunity then to pick another library like Joy, Yup, or Revalidate. Revalidate was written specifically for Redux form. I want to mention real quick, version 6 is coming out soon. So if you check it out in a month from now, and you're like, that looks really different than his stuff. I'm showing you version, version 5. Well, everybody's using Redux, so I'll skip that slide, right? All right, let's go back to our party. So there you are. Your coworker is bothering you. And where we left off was you were looking at Chuck Norris and because you knew better than this coworker. You knew to use Redux form. So Chuck Norris backhands your coworker or gives this coworker a roundhouse of love and encouragement to please use Redux form. Because you know better. You know if you want to do it fast, make it fun, you will use Redux form. Thank you. <laughs> all right, any questions? Yo, Ramsey. Um, are all of them in the type text, or is there some way to tell Redux? Great question. So the text, and it sure does not. 
these examples are all okay. I'm going to show you. In this case, he's using some lists. You know, you, if you have an array value or an object, you can do that. But yes, you the code. I mean, this input. I didn't use React Bootstrap for this example. I'm just using the normal, the built-in input, right? So you could put type equals email. You could use select and drop downs. It can actually be anything that you want. And then you might have to customize the validator to make it make sense. But in some of my forms, I use date. I use numeric. I use all the other things. So anything you want. Yeah? Does it, uh, does it dirty up your store? storing a bunch of stuff in there, or is it at the end of the day, does it just store that single value, or is it adding like extra structure and stuff in your store? That... Great question. So does it dirty up your store? Where does it live in your store? I didn't show you, but there's a line or two of code uh, that you, well, I could just show you real quick. Where is my, I can't show you in here. So you get to choose where it lives is the answer. And so this is not this website, including what we're looking at here, is not mine, meaning I didn't build this from scratch. This is part of Eric Rasmussen's very popular React starter kit package. So that's why we're seeing extra things. But he chose to have Redux form wired to this. And if we had a bunch of forms, they would all be keys under form. So I think the answer to your question is no, it doesn't dirty it up. It, it takes one key, and then it stores everything it needs on its own, and it manages all of that, and it's never in your way. Any other questions? OK. <clears throat>